The E9 error code on TCL air conditioners is associated with issues in the control electronic board located in the outdoor unit. If the fault is genuine, the problem lies in the Intelligent Power Module IPM, which is responsible for directly supplying power to the inverter compressor, also known as the IPM electronic module. However, in some cases, following a proper diagnostic procedure can resolve the issue and identify other causes of this fault. The following steps outline the process, starting with the simplest and progressing to the more complex ones. 1. Turn off and unplug the unit for several minutes. Turn it back on and check if the E9 error code persists. 2. Using a multimeter set to the AC voltage scale, check the voltage supplied by the external power grid. If the voltage is unstable, consider using a voltage stabilizer and inspect the electrical connections from the external grid. 3. If the E9 error persists and occurs, when the compressor starts or doesn't start at all, verify that the connection from the external electronic board to the compressor is correct. 4. Additionally, perform a visual inspection of the outdoor unit. Check for cleanliness, proper airflow, and correct fan operation. If the problem is poor heat exchange in the outdoor unit, the E9 error code may take a few minutes to manifest and often does not trigger immediately. 5. If the unit was recently serviced by a technician, consider the possibility of excess refrigerant in the system. In this case, the E9 error code may take a few minutes to manifest and often does not trigger immediately. 6. Inspect the capacitors and components on the electronic board and check the condition of the board's tracks. 7. Locate the external electronic board and ensure the external module is properly installed on the radiation fins and that the silicone is evenly applied. Tighten the screws again if they are loose. 8. Now it's time to internally inspect the IPM electronic module. Follow the procedure described below. 1. Disconnect the equipment from the power supply. Remember that capacitors can store current. Use a multimeter on the DC voltage scale to measure across the capacitors and ensure they are discharged. 2. Locate the IPM electronic circuit. The IPM electronic circuit is covered by heat dissipating fins. Its pins are connected via three independent tracks and an electrical connector to the three compressor pins. 3. Positive power supply. Identify the high voltage positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the positive track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 4. Negative power supply. Identify the negative track from the capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the negative track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 5. Identify the output points UVW. These can be identified by following the tracks from the compressor connectors to the IPM electronic circuit. 6. Set the multimeter to the diode scale. 7. The IPM electronic circuit is internally composed of 6 IGBT transistors each containing a diode that we will test. Let's start with the integrity test of the first three diodes. A. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the positive input of the IPM electronic circuit. 
B. Use the red probe to measure the point U V W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be around 0.45 volts for each measurement. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin U V W should yield practically the same reading. Let's proceed with the integrity test of the last three diodes. A. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the negative input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the black probe to measure the point U V W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be similar to those obtained previously. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. If everything seems fine with the IPM electronic circuit, you can perform the following test. A. Connect the electronic board to the power supply, taking the necessary precautions. B. Set the multimeter to the DC voltage scale at 400 volts. C. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. D. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the negative power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. E. The power supply value will depend on your electronic board's power supply, expecting values around 150 volts for a 110 volt supply and approximately 300 volts for a 220 volt supply. F. If no power appears, the issue with the external electronic board lies in the power supply and not directly in the IPM electronic circuit. 